Hello world, how you beautiful people doing out there? You know my blacks, white, Asian, Mexicans, and all my Indians, well, what's up with it? How y'all doing? You know, let's talk women for a minute before we get into this video game stuff. Let's talk women. You know, there's two type of women out there in the world, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna use Lois Lane from Man of Steel, and then we're gonna use Rachel from The Dark Knight. Now when the Joker shot the, shot the glass in the building, and, talk, and threw Rachel out the building, you know, Batman risked risk his life, you know, put his life on the line for this girl, you know what I'm saying? Threw himself out there, saved her, and then when he saved her, this girl with her unappreciative self is going to tell Batman, don't do that again. And then she's going to say, is Harvey okay? You know what I'm saying? What, what you call that? But anyway, then you got Lois Lane, you know what I'm saying? When she was in that little pod and, the, and, it was, and, she was crash, and the thing was crashing to Earth and Superman was in Krypton talking to his father... You know what I'm saying? Superman saved her after break the glass open to get her. You know, she held on to him tight. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying? And, when, and um, Superman, when they land on Earth, she wasn't like, she, she, didn't, she didn't curse Superman out. She didn't, she didn't curse him out. She was appreciative. She was thankful. She loved, you know what I'm saying? She loved every minute minute of it. You know what I'm saying? So, when it comes to those those two type of women, that's the woman you go for, Lois Lane. You know what I'm saying? Because Lois Lane got more style. She got style. She got elegance, grace, the whole nine. Unlike Rachel on the Dark Knight, she's unappreciative. She's self-centered, and she and she and she, <laughs> and she takes things for granted. She only thinks about herself. So, when it comes to those type, those two type of women, you only go for uh, you you want to go for Lewis Lane. That's the type of woman you go for. Unlike Rachel on the Dark Knight, no, don't mess with her. <laughs> Y'all sitting there like, what? Anyway, anyway, let's start video games for a minute. You know, this backwards compatibility thing, you know, it's real. Ain't no more faking it now, it's real. So, you know, Microsoft is in the driver's seat right now with this old backwards compatibility thing. I was just reading the article where they say they got 500, 500 like Xbox 360, Xbox 360 game plus like, I think like 100, I think somewhere around there, like of games like backwards compatible for the Xbox Series X. And those games are gonna be what running in what 60 frames or 60 frames to 120 frames per second? Whoo! Yeah. And then this and then the Xbox Series X is backwards compatible with Xbox One. Man, and then Microsoft got the got the got the most profitable console on the market. So Sony and Microsoft, you know, I mean not Sony and Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo got got work to do, you know. And I know you Nintendo fans, you Nintendo fans that that hate it on the Wii U don't want to hear this, but I'm just going to tell you like it is. You're going to have to come back to the Wii U. You know, you're going to have to bring the Switch games over to the Wii U, bring the Switch Pro controller over to the Wii U. And then you got to get that fix the SD card port so once you fix the Wii U, now you can play physically, you can play Switch games, GameCube games, Wii games, Wii U games, next gen and then add the virtual console on top of that. You know what I'm saying Sony on the other hand they got work to do man you know they got to make it <laughs> they got work to do on this backwards compatibility thing you can talk solid state hard drives and ray tracing all you want but if, if you ain't got if, I mean if, <laughs> if your system need to be backwards compatible and if you ain't got the most powerful console forget it <laughs> you know Microsoft got this so you know Xbox fans right now <laughs> they just chilling and relaxing right now because they remember when Sony mocked them with that game sharing thing so xbox fans was like okay we'll, we'll see about that we're gonna fix that and fix it they did and look at them now <laughs> you know what I'm saying? so you know sony fans and, and nintendo fans right now should be eating crow right now you know and then nintendo you know <laughs> you know they should have started the backwards compatibility thing back with the nintendo 64 you know when when go based on the article remember that that, that, that article about uh, a history of perfect dark if you read it it talks about how uh, GoldenEye used up all the resource for the N64 if that was the case then Nintendo should have made a 64-bit CD system and 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 didn't and um, make a 64-bit CD system and then and and and, and they shouldn't have never made the expansion pack or that 64-bit CD now, I mean that 64, uh, 64, um, 64 bit disk drive system. They should have never made those two. You know what I'm saying? That's when backwards compatibility should have started with Nintendo when it came, it was with the 64. And then when you make the GameCube, when they made the GameCube, they undercut it. 
You know what I'm saying? They, they had a 485 megahertz system. And then um, the CD ROM was a 1.1 1 .1, uh, uh, mini disc where they should have been using a full fledged uh, DVD disc. So they should have had the GameCube backwards compatible with N64. Then when it comes to the Wii, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Microsoft first consoles was the Xbox and that was 700 megahertz. So they shouldn't have never used that 700 megahertz. They should have went above it. And then once they make the Wii more, you know, up, went above 700 megahertz, then they should have made the Wii backwards compatible with GameCube and the N64. N64, if the N64 was CD, you know what I'm saying? Then when it comes to the Wii U, they should have went above the specs that they have, that they had in the Wii U right now. And then they should have made the Wii U backwards compatible with Wii, GameCube, and the Nintendo 64. You know what I'm saying? And then when it comes to next gen, they would have been in the driver's seat. But Nintendo took uh, backwards compatibility for granted, and now and now and now they now they now, now they gonna have to pay a price for it now. So the Nintendo fans, I know you don't want to hear this, but you Switch fans that be hating on the Wii U, you're gonna have to come back to the Wii U because backwards compatibility is real. See, there's only so much consoles you can hold on to. You know, what's the so many consoles? If you own a house, you can hold on to a lot of consoles. But if you're in an apartment, you're, you can hold like one or two at max. You know what I'm saying? So um, backwards compatibility is real. And then what is the point of buying the same game uh, like twice, three times, or four times? If you got the original copy, let's say they make a, a HD version of Metal Gear. And if you got the original, okay, fine. Collect the, the updates and the update will turn your original, your, your, your original, the physical copy into HD. Same. Same thing for Resident Evil 4. If you got Resident Evil 4, and then when they re when they remade the uh, when they remade it, then you just collect the updates, and then since you got the physical copy, the updates will turn your 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 physical copy game into HD. So, so that way you don't have to buy the game two times, three times, four times. You know. So yeah, man. I mean, backwards compatibility is real, and plus, consoles get old, parts wear out, stuff like that, man. And it costs it costs money to get parts, so backwards compatible ability is real and what microsoft did with the xbox one was nice because they built a nice backwards compatibility program and 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 right now they're just rubbing it in it rubbing it rubbing it in it <laughs> in they rubbing it in um in people's in in this is sony sony and um nintendo's faces because microsoft is the underdog in all this if you really look at it they are the underdog in all this remember when they came through the the door came through the door with the first xbox you know what i'm saying they i mean they they, they they um they them see they weren't microsoft was not like built like like sony and nintendo where they were built in japan and then they had a history like sony and nintendo microsoft had was the underdog in all this and look at them now you know what i'm saying so man sony and nintendo really got to step their game up man really got to step their game up this backwards compatibility thing is real and it's no joke so man, um, and and then backwards compatibility also helps helps kind of kind of slow down the emulation emulation process too. Huh? Yeah, man. I mean, um, you know, when Sony started with the PS2, when they made the PS2 backwards compatible with PS1, when they made the uh, when they made the uh, the uh, the PlayStation 3, you know. And um, the 20 gig and the 60 gig was back fully backwards compatible. The difference between the 20 gig and 60 gig model was the 60 gig was Wi-Fi with Ethernet. The uh, the 20 gig is just Ethernet. So um, uh, Sony should have continued with that backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4. That's what they should have done. You know, but they probably they took it for granted, and now now it's real. So while everybody was sitting here talking about sales and exclusives and who got the most tape, when Sony and Nintendo was sitting there talking about sales and exclusive and who got the most games, Microsoft was in the background working on their infrastructure. And when they created that backwards compatibility program, man. That was it. It was, it, it was real. It was real. And then they got the most powerful console. They got the two most powerful console on the on the market, the Xbox One X, which is this gen, and then next gen. The Xbox Series X and both of them is backwards compatible? <laughs> Dude, Microsoft is in a driver's seat right now. So as soon as the as soon as the console race starts, they're gonna take the Xbox X series. 
Series X, drop in the middle of what they got going, take off, man. So, yeah, backwards compatible is it, compatibility is real. And Sony and Microsoft need to step, not Sony and Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo need to step their game up. They, they do. You know, stop taking things for granted. Stop taking things for granted. I mean, the, the, the Wii U fans wanted wanted Nintendo to make the Wii U backwards compatible with GameCube so we could so we could play Soul Calibur 2's NBA Street, Super Mario Strikers on and all that. Speaking of Soul Calibur 2, Link Link should have been in um Link should have been in Soul Calibur 4, 5, and 6. If he was that crazy in Soul Calibur 2, imagine what Link would have been in Soul Calibur 4, 5, and 6. So that's a missed opportunity on Nintendo, you know? So when people had the Wii U, we used to get, we used to get on Nintendo about that on the Miiverse and the administrators would block us when we, when we would ask. They would block us, you know? And we, would, we, would, we, would, we were trying to let them know, like, man, we need the Wii U. We need to continue using this. And look what's happening next gen, man. <laughs> It is real, yeah. And then you missed out on three beautiful Star Wars games, Battlefront One, Two, and Jedi Fallen Order. And then me being a Star Wars fan, my first Star Wars on a, was on a Nintendo console. I think I think on the Super Nintendo. I think I think it was Super Nintendo or, or eight bit. But um, yeah. Um, to see that, to see that the Nintendo fan base missed out on three Star Wars games. And don't give me that Jedi Jedi uh. That jet, that power, uh, that Star Wars game that that was on the Xbox, that they were supposed to port to the Switch. Come on, man, Wii, you can run that. So, yeah, man. Um, backwards compatibility is real, man. And um, missing out on games is not an option. So, <laughs> and by the way, the Wii, I mean the Wii U right now can run Bioshock. The Wii U can run Bioshock. Because, look, Xenoblade Chronicle X on the Wii U right now is bigger than Fallout 4 separately, Skyrim separately, and Witcher 3. So if Xenoblade Chronicle X is that big, then the Wii U can run Bioshock. <laughs> I'm just saying, so yeah. Backwards compatibility, man, is real, man. You know, so the Wii U ain't dead, by the way. And Sony right now, Sony got to step their game up, man. They got to step their game up. Yeah, their PlayStation is powerful, but... Xbox Series X just got they, they're in the driver's seat right now. I mean, um, the Xbox fans is right now probably laughing at the Sony fans right now, la laughing at the Sony fans right now, just laughing at them. <laughs> and I can remember, like, like remember when you guys laughed at Microsoft when with that game sharing thing? Remember? remember, remember how you guys mocked the first Xbox when we when with, with that Connect situation? Xbox fans is laughing. They, just, they ain't saying nothing. They ain't saying nothing, but they really laughing. If you, <laughs> that's that they're really laughing. That's what they're doing. But yeah, man, um, Sony and Nintendo um, really need to take backwards compatibility serious. They have to, and Nintendo's gonna have to go back to the Wii U, and they're gonna have to fix the problems with it from the tablet, and they're gonna have to improve the 25 gig CD to 200 gigs in storage because Sony and Microsoft is using 100 gigs on the Blu-ray discs for games. Yeah. And they're gonna have to fix the console, the CD, the tablet, and the controllers. Give the controllers a USB connection to rechargeability. You go from there. Yeah, that's what they're gonna have to do. And they're gonna have to fix the SD card port so the Wii U can play Switch games, GameCube games, Wii games, Wii U games, next gen, and the virtual console is digitally. If you want to talk about who is the most backwards compatible system, it would be the Wii U first. PlayStation second and then Xbox third. Well, since Sony and Microsoft, not, not Sony and Microsoft, so, since Sony and Nintendo didn't take advantage of backwards compatibility, now Microsoft is in first place right now with that. Okay? Because if, if we were to do it in order, it would be the Wii U first, PlayStation second, and Xbox third. The reason why the Wii U would be first because they're back. They, if they were if they were to fix the Wii U, it would be backwards compatible with Switch games, GameCube games, Wii games, Wii U game, next gen, 
and then the virtual console because with the virtual console you can play all the, the past nintendo console games right but with the virtual console you can play all the atari console games neo geo cartridges cd panasonic 3do uh <laughs> sega master system to probably dreamcast and any other consoles you can think of and then every arcade game that's ever been made wii u will be in first place right now if, if if the wii u was fixed if we're talking backwards compatibility but since but since nintendo and micro nintendo and um sony didn't take care of their backwards compatibility situation microsoft is in the driver's seat okay so anyway that's 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 it in a nutshell for you when it comes to this backwards compatibility thing compatibility thing microsoft is in the driver's seat anyway nice talking to you beautiful people blacks white asian mexican indians nice talking to y'all this chris you know it's a star wars and star trek thing or the dark side i'm gone peace